Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Look, it doesn't matter how much you think you know about this 20-year-old pixelated game, there's always something new to learn. As of the time of making this video, just today on stream, I learned about a shortcut to steal dragons in the Brimhaven dungeon which I didn't know about. And speaking of, I've been streaming every day on this channel, starting at about 9am CST, if you want to come hang out and chat with us. Sometimes it's not about knowing little tips like that, but knowing how to avoid easy mistakes in order to play more efficiently and have more fun doing it. Which is why today we are going to talk about 10 common mistakes OSRS players make, and how to avoid them. If this video is helpful to you, remember to subscribe with notifications on, drop a cheeky like, and to join our Discord server with the link in the description below to interact with me and our amazing community. No real disclaimers for this one, other than I will mention these common mistakes from most to least important, but that's not to say the last ones are not absolutely crucial. Boys and girls, let's begin. I will start with a mistake that seems too obvious, and I shouldn't even have to include it. But it's something that is still prevalent not only in old-school RuneScape, but online gaming in general. If you wonder why people are still scamming in this game, it's simply because people keep falling for it. I'm sure you've been at a grand exchange and seen people saying stuff like buying an expensive item for way more than it's worth, saying that someone is quitting and asking you to search something on YouTube to be able to win some GP, and hell, I've even experienced something like that a few streams ago, where someone traded me, showed me full gilded and like 30 mil, and asked me to follow them for instruction which was obviously a scam. These range from quickly trying to steal your items if you're not paying attention, all the way up to socially engineering you for days or even weeks to gain your trust and then steal your items, to then sell the gold on the black market. Some of the most elaborate ones even include having people to tell you installing Runelite plugins outside of the plugin hub, which is a big, big no. Boys and girls, just like in real life, if something is too good to be true, it probably is. The best way to avoid this is just not talking to strangers. And if you play with public chat off, you will be 100% protected from these absolute rats trying to take advantage of naive people. And hey, worst case scenario, if you fall for a scam, at least you learned a valuable lesson, and hopefully you won't fall for that ever again. I know a ton of people love training Slayer or doing bossing, but another common mistake is ignoring quests both in the early and the late game. If you're starting a new account, some beginner quests offer great experience rewards that will skip hours of training if you were to do it individually. This is even more important in the late game since Master and Grandmaster quests unlock the entire game for you. Dragon Slayer 2, Monkey Madness 2, Song of the Elves, and Sins of the Father, for example, are absolutely crucial for your account and will also get it to the late game very smoothly. This is not only limited to areas, but the quests also offer great unlocks when it comes to training methods for you to gain experience either more efficiently or in a more convenient way. Take Dragon Slayer 2, for example. When you're done with it, you will be able to craft the Wrath Runes, which under specific circumstances, it is the best skilling money-making in the game. Now, listen, I'm not saying you have to speedrun a quest cape as soon as you start your account, but the amount of knowledge you will gain from questing is going to be absurd. As well as the amount of utility items and unlocks you get from the many adventures this game has to offer. And you're not really gonna have to do them ever again, unless you make a new account, or you play any of the additional game modes OSRS has to offer, like Leagues, Deathman mode, and so on. I love the next one because it's such a common thing for people to do, and I love guiding players the right direction to hopefully avoid wasting so much time. I'm pretty sure you've seen accounts with high or even maxed out combat stats and their slayer levels not being as high. And hey, you are maybe that account. More often than not, these are what I like to call a Nightmare Zone account or a Nightmare Zone warrior. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you've been camping the Nightmare Zone, but also things like Rock Crabs, Sand Crabs, or even Ammonite Crabs. A common misconception is that if you have high combat stats, Slayer will go by faster because you deal more damage, therefore kill Slayer monsters quicker, therefore get more experience per hour, and while that's technically true, if you really think about it, by the time you hit 99 Slayer, you will most likely also max to your account or have near max to combat stats. And even if that's not the case, training combat outside of Slayer simply means that you will do extra work for the same goal. Now, you might be like, well, Chaos, I like training here when I'm working since it's pretty AFK. The good news is that there are even better things to do and also require little to no attention. If you focus on skills like fishing or woodcutting, which are way worse, you will get those boring things out of the way quicker. Another great one I have for you guys is something I don't see a lot of people talking about. And it is that you shouldn't set big goals for your account if you're starting small. 
But what do I mean by big goals? Well, imagine you start a new account and you go like, Okay, I'm going to fulfill my childhood dream and I'm going to max my account. You're gonna be pretty disappointed to learn just how long it can take even with modern training methods that offer more experience per hour than before. Setting small goals you can reach within a few days will prepare you for the many long grinds ahead of you. Like earning a quest cape, getting a 99, achievement diary cape, an infernal cape, or hey, even maxing your account. Your goal can be as simple as, okay, I'm going to efficiently train runecrafting for just an hour every day, and that's perfectly fine. Remember the only person you're competing with is yourself, so make sure to avoid setting huge goals to avoid burnout. For this one, I will give you an extra tip that's something that helped me out immensely when grinding for the maxscape. If you're training a skill, do it for one hour and see how much experience you got. For the next hour, try to beat that experience per hour, and do that until you fail, and if you do so, you can even give it a try to beat your own record again. The time is going to absolutely fly when doing it this way, and you can take it from me. I actually maxed with this method, and it was a ton of fun. Researching things on the wiki, YouTube, or even other Discord communities will be a huge help when it comes to saving time before you commit to a longer grind. I will start this one with an example. Just recently I finished the grinding for the mole pet, and after trading in all my mole parts I was left with around 6,000 bird nests. After getting all the rings and seeds out of them, I said that I would crush them all to increase my profit from the grind. Thank the lord I said this on stream because a few people told me that there's an NPC in Narda that grinds your items for a small fee. Had I not known this, I would have spent an obscene amount of time manually grinding them myself, wasting valuable time for other grinds. Not only is this going to help you save time, but it could also save your life. I've heard of another streamer, not me by the way, who died at Sigmund during the quest Another Slice of Ham on his hardcore, and it's because he got too cocky and didn't know that there's a mechanic where if you click on Zanik during the fight, Sigmund slaps you for a 9, which stacked him out and died rather fast. Always make sure to research anything and everything you're curious about, related to training or even more important, boss mechanics. Another tip I've briefly mentioned before is that if you are keeping a big cash stack in your bank, you are much better off spending it on small or medium upgrades. Or even investing in skills if they are not 99 yet. I don't care if you're a stingy rat like me, if you're not maxed and in the end game, saving up for your last upgrades, don't be afraid to spend your money. Now, let's be honest. If you're in the mid or even late game, gear upgrades are not that game-changing. And most items are quite affordable until your next steps are like Torva, Scythe, Masori, Tivo, Ancestral, Tumikin, and so on. Remember the saying, you gotta spend money to make money. With higher stats, you have access to higher level money-making methods, which in most cases will help you get that cash stack back with some chill activities. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to every skill, but ones like Prayer, Construction, and Herblore to name a few, will give your account a ton of utility that will be useful later down the road. As an account outside of the endgame only applicable to unrestricted accounts, of course, you should always aim to spend money on skills in order to get them out of the way, and so you can start saving for those big items you have been waiting for so long. On the other hand, we are now going to talk about making money. And one mistake I see people make is that they are not taking care of their daily activities to make money without putting much effort into it. I know so many people who hit 99 farming and just stopped doing their herb runs because, well, they think they are done with the skill. When, in reality, 99 is just the beginning to unlock the skill's full potential through your farm runs. I have an entire video dedicated on daily activities you can do in order to passively gain tons of cash. Other than your hourly farm runs, you can do things like coconut runs, Yanillion hops, getting your daily herb boxes from the Nightmare Zone with some spare points, your daily battle staves from the staff shop, and even your birdhouse runs which will also provide with passive hunter experience. Apart from that video, you should always look into doing these activities more efficient or even more profitable. For example, if you do your herb runs every hour and you only have 6 patches available, a great goal would be to look into unlocking the other 3 in order to increase your profit per run. Not only is this going to help your GP per hour, but your account will naturally progress by having these goals at one point or another. So, whenever you do your runs, unlocking as many patches as possible will be the way to go. Another mistake is doing things in the game your account might not be prepared for, even if you meet the requirements. I know, I know you're super excited to try that new piece of content you just unlocked, like the Corrupted Gauntlet, Vorka, the Tombs of Mascot, but you have to ask yourself, is your account truly ready to take on that new challenge? And let me give you two points of view. 
On one hand, if you want to try a boss just to experience the mechanics, see what it drops, or just to see if you have fun with it, by all means go ahead and give it a go. Minimum stats and gear will be more than enough for even just a single kill if you want to see what the hype is all about. On the other hand, a lot of people come into my streams and say things like, Hey Chaos, I have these levels and gear, am I ready for this boss? To which I always answer with, well, are you going to do it long term or just for a bit? Most of the time their answer is long term commitment, to which I reply that they are probably lacking some levels and gear, and here's why. If you want to grind a boss for a pet or a unique item, let's be honest, you will have to do it for a long time unless you get absolutely spooned. In order to do it for a long time you will need to maximize damage and gear, or if you are going to be camping something, it is better to be on the higher end of the requirements for you not to have a miserable time doing it. I mean, sure, you can kill 50 Vorkath for your assembler with like 75 range, the rune crossbow and anti-dragon shield, but do you want the pet or do you want to make a ton of money for your next upgrade? You better have at least 90 range, the rigor, dragon hunter crossbow, dragon fire ward, just to mention a few. It's always nice to experience new content, but don't commit to it long term if you don't have adequate levels and the gear for it. You're gonna thank yourself for that later down the road. And speaking of bosses, I have also mentioned this one before, and it's something that might still get me crucified by some people in the comments. If you're focused on the grind, bossing before 99 Slayer is probably not the way to go. And before you dislike the video, just hear me out for a second. I have almost 25 million Slayer experience, and every time I get a task that can be done through a boss, I will almost always go for the boss variant, instead in order to try my luck at either the pet or some great loot. I mean, I absolutely hate Grota's Guardians, but if I didn't go for the boss kill, I wouldn't have gotten one of my biggest spoons to date, the Gargoyle Pet, at only 134 KC. And I basically do this because, as it's obvious, I don't need to worry about levels anymore. Now, that's not to say this is a mistake, but this is what I personally did on my way to maxing. And it's something I highly recommend when people ask me if they should do a boss on their way to 99. If you're an Ironman, doing bosses through Slayer might be mandatory, but as an unrestricted account, money will come to you passively through other activities, even through Slayer. And focusing on experience will pay off in the long run. The faster you get that 99, the faster you will be able to focus on bosses to get tons of GP. And like I said before, I know I'm not your dad, I'm not gonna tell you how to play the game, but this is just advice from someone who has sunk over 7,000 hours in this point-and-click medieval game for children, which could potentially help you out. Last and definitely not least, a big mistake I see people making when playing old school RuneScape is not having fun. If you play the game, there's a big chance you're here because you have played it before, meaning you already know what you got yourself into. If you are grinding a skill, a boss, or even some GP, and you're not enjoying yourself while doing it, I mean, what the hell are you even doing? One of the many advantages this game has to offer is that, unless you are explicitly competing with someone, you don't really need to worry about anything and you can play at your own pace. Games like League of Legends, Call of Duty for example, have a ranking system which actually make you compete against other players. In Old School RuneScape, you are your only opponent. Remember that this is a video game and you should only play when you feel like it. And if you're not enjoying a grind, just switch it up and have fun doing something else, either in or outside of the game. But part of the fun just comes from seeing that thing that I've been grinding for finally popping out in my stream after hours of effort. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments below what the common mistake you think is in Old School RuneScape and how to avoid it. I want to give a huge thank you to all my wonderful channel members, your support means a lot to me and it definitely goes a long way. If you would like to be part of this list of absolute legends, click the join button below and see all of the cool perks and rewards you can get from a monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams and of course in the Discord. In the next one, we will go over a medium clue scroll farming guide for you to try your luck at a nice pair of ranger boots out of a medium casket, just like I showed you guys last week. You have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba-ba-ba-ba, a peace.